All right, Alexander, let's do an update on the situation in Niger. And the latest news is that Deputy Secretary of State, the number two person in the State Department now, Victoria Newland, made a trip to Niger. It doesn't sound like it was a very successful trip, to be honest. Uh, whenever they use the words uh, frank, and difficult in uh, their statements after a meeting Victoria Newland had with the uh, the leadership team in uh, Niger. She used the terms frank and difficult. Whenever they say those words, it means that uh, things went really, really bad. But yes. uh, what, what is your take on uh, Victoria Newland's trip to Niger? She wasn't bringing cookies this no. time around. During this, coup, uh, during this coup, she was not bringing cookies, Alexander. Absolutely. Now, I think what happened, and the, perhaps the key word is frank, but I think what's happened is that she came to deliver an ultimatum. I think she told the Niger people to stand down, bring back the civilian president. If they don't, um, there, will be pro there will be trouble. And um, I know there are some people who think that the prospect of foreign intervention in Niger has subsided. I disagree. I think that the moves in Nigeria, Nigeria people are clearly not particularly keen, but I think the president most definitely does want to intervene in Niger. I think the military chief in Nigeria also wants to intervene in Niger. And I think South Senegal and other ECOWAS countries have been put up to do it as well. Niger is just too important to be left to go uh, uh, rogue, as you know, Victoria Newland would say. I'm not suggesting it really is going rogue, but that's how she would define it. So I think she's gone to Niger, delivered an ultimatum. Um, the um, Niger military refused to back down. They said that they're not prepared to bring the president back. They're not prepared to submit to this ultimatum that she was she had in her pocket. And I think the stage is now set for the next part of the act, the, the play, which I suspect will be some intervention by um, the ECOWAS states, or at least some of the ECOWAS states over the next uh, few days or perhaps weeks. What, uh, what kind of intervention from the West do you expect? Right. I, I think that the Western powers will probably want to avoid becoming directly involved in military terms. Now, the French have threatened airstrikes. I mean, that's, again, you know, you have to unscramble the words, but clearly that's what Macron was talking about at one point. The US and France, of course, still do have troops in Niger. The, the military in Niger want them to leave, but I've seen no sign that they're doing so. But I don't think that the Western powers will themselves want to become involved, overthrowing by military means an African government, because that would smack of neo-colonialism, neo-imperialism, or that kind of thing. But they do have countries in ECOWAS, not especially Nigeria and Senegal, that, it, that look like their leaders want to go into Niger and to restore the government, the civilian government there. And I think they'll be both backing those moves and in private urging them. I think that's probably what they want to do. They want to see the Nigerians and the Senegalese go into Niger. Now, N Nigeria is a giant of a country by West African standards. And, of course, it has a large military. Senegal has apparently or supposedly one of the best militaries in Africa. The Niger military is quite small. It's um, Western trained, by the way, but it's quite small. Niger doesn't have much of an air force. So in theory and logically, it should be a fairly straightforward intervention if there is a military intervention. But, of course, we can't be certain because... We don't know how the population in Niger would react. Niger is a complicated country, as most African states in West Africa are. Um, there are other countries nearby that disapprove of a military intervention in Niger. Um, Mali and Burkina Faso have made it absolutely clear that they're opposed to an intervention and that they back the military in Niger. And Algeria 
has stopped short of saying that it would help Niger directly in the event of an intervention. But it's made it very clear that it doesn't support one. In fact, that it opposes one. And of course, Algeria has a border with Niger. And if you pass Nigerian, Algerian comments carefully, what it seems to me that the Algerians are saying is, you know, with our border, we have means of making life difficult for you if you do enter Niger and overthrow the military there and intervene in that country. And that could set the scene for some kind of insurgency, perhaps. But anyways, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very high-risk situation. It could very easily lead to um, a, you know, a new conflict in West Africa, or so it seems to me. But I think that from the perspective of people like Newland, and indeed Macron, uh, Niger is just too important. It's too important in terms of its uranium and its other minerals, its strategic location, the fact that the US has a major drone base there. It's just too important to lose. I mean, that's how they perceive these things. And I think that they're prepared to take those risks. And I think that there are leaders in Senegal and Nigeria who are prepared to play along with them. Yeah, the, uh, the military government, the coup government, they have, it seems they have started to, to create a government, uh, yes. a government of, uh, of technocrats and, and bureaucrats. They actually appointed, from what I understand, the former finance minister as a prime minister. So... It seems like this uh, this coup government is starting to move forward with the creation of of their own uh, government to to begin to administer the the country's needs. Th this this conflict, this brewing conflict in Niger, it seems like it's the the exact type of conflict that the neocons and the U.S. military um, prefers. Yeah. You know, you understand what I mean. That after Absolutely. the catastrophe, and and the and the debacle that that they're enduring in Ukraine, especially NATO, um, I, I think something like like, like Niger is, is is a type of conflict that that they don't mind uh, getting involved in. I think that's exactly right because I mean it's I mean it's a big country, but it's not a, with twenty five million people apparently. But the point is, it doesn't have a strong military. It doesn't have strong institutions. It's the sort of place where they probably calculate. They might be wrong in these calculations, but they probably calculate that they can control anything that happens there, and that they can always buy people. I mean, corruption in West Africa has historically been a problem, that they can buy the support of people, they can do various things. So it, it, it is the kind of intervention which falls within their comfort zone. And, well, perhaps they thought the same about Afghanistan, you know, in the past. But, of course, Afghanistan, there has been a long history of resistance to outsiders and the terrain is difficult. I think the same doesn't apply to Niger in anything, to anything like the same degree. So I think they're saying to themselves, well, look, we've got regional, strong regional allies, at least over this issue. I do think, by the way, uh, Nigeria and Senegal should be seen as US satellites or vassals. They have their own reasons for wanting to intervene in Niger. But on this, they're aligned with the US. So they have strong regional allies with powerful militaries. Niger doesn't. Niger is historically been relatively easy to control. So they're probably saying to themselves, there's not really very much risk if we intervene in this country. Um, Algeria might be a problem, but we can deal with that too. So I think you're absolutely right. I think it's well within their comfort zone. And that's another reason why I think they're going to do it. Yeah, and um, Biden, Macron, they can take a victory lap yeah. if if they manage to to successfully restore the, the the former government, and and they could also frame it from the from the standpoint of of, of the collective West removing Russian influence Absolutely. from West Africa, because even Newland, when she was in Niger. 
she was talking up this, I, I think it's this type of phantom uh, yeah. presence of Wagner there, but she was warning the, the, the government in Niger not to align itself with Wagner. And, and I think this is, yeah. this is a non-issue. I mean, I, I haven't seen any concrete evidence that Wagner has a, has a presence in Niger. It's a complete phantom. It simply isn't true. I mean, there's been an awful lot of stories. Remember, a couple of days ago, there was a film of a Russian Illusion 76 aircraft flying into the airport in Niger, and everybody rushed and said, you know, that's Wagner flying in to defend the uh, military leaders there. And, of course, this was apparently a film made in 2006. <laughs> it has no bearing at all on this situation. The, uh, Wagner has no presence in Niger. There is no evidence that there's any people from Wagner in Niger at all. Um, and the Russians are not involved in this in any way. In fact, they're embarrassed by it. They've actually condemned the coup. <laughs> they said that they want to... S- they also said they want to see the civilian president restored to power. They have no strategic interest in Niger whatsoever. Obviously, if the government in Niger, the military government, were able to retain control and consolidate itself and in the future reach out to Russia, well, at that point, as happened in Mali and Burkina Faso, the Russians probably would say yes. But that isn't the situation at the moment. They've got good relations with some of the African countries that are strongly opposed to the coup, like Senegal, for example. So they're not going to, they're not going to involve themselves in it. I mean, you know, they're not going to cheer U.S. intervention or, or, or the intervention in Niger what they're going to say is this is none of our business and we're staying out. So this thing that's been conjured up by various people at various levels, you know, both those who want to see the Russians there because they see Niger as a, you know, important place to leverage uh, against the West, and those who, as you said, invoke the phantom of Russian intervention in Niger in order to justify an intervention. They're talking about something that doesn't exist. Yeah, I agree with you on that. All right. Uh, anything else that you want to add to this uh, story before we wrap it up? I think, I think if the, I just want to say this, I think if ECOWAS, if these ECOWAS states, Niger, uh, Senegal, Nigeria and the others, do intervene in Niger, and I think if the Western powers support it, and I think all the likelihood is that they will. I think they're making a big mistake. I mean, you know, putting aside whatever you may think about the fact that this government has come to power, this new government is coming to power through a coup, it is clear that there is a lot of dissatisfaction, disaffection in Niger with its um, current alignment with France. And I think that trying to restore by force something that is clearly failing in Niger itself is a recipe for future trouble and instability in West Africa. I can very easily see how this intervention could spiral out of control, could create all the kind of problems that we've discussed, migration flows to Europe, all of those things, and heaven help us, it might even open the way for jihadi groups to establish themselves in this area. So I think the best policy would be to leave Niger alone to sort out its own problems. But, of course, that is never advice that people like Victoria Nuland or, indeed, Macron are ever going to follow. No, they can't because, like you said, the resources, the money is just too much. The pillaging and the plundering is is, exactly too robust (laughs) in, in Niger, unfortunately. Okay, uh, we will leave it there, vdoran.locals.com. We are on Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, Telegram, and Rockfin, and go to the Duran shop, 10% off. Use the code GOODDAY. Take care.